in the name of the one holy and undivided Trinity. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Today in our first reading, we meet the Israelites while they are traveling, searching, making their way to the promised land. This is after God has delivered them from plagues and the Passover, after God has have, had saved them from slavery in Egypt, after God had parted the Red Sea for them to cross safely, after they have cried out in hunger and God has provided them manna to eat, after God has protected and pro provided for them time and time again, and now, after all of that, they are yelling at Moses because they have no water to drink. They, that they are abandoned, that they were better off back in Egypt. And on the one hand, we should give them grace. That must have been terrifying. It must have been a terrifying situation to be without water and not be able to care for their children. And on the other hand, as we have seen, time and time again, God has been on their side. God has saved them over and over, and yet they still doubt God's promise. They still question if God is with them. But I'm willing to bet that many of us can relate, can't we? Have you ever had a time where everything seems to be going wrong? when it's one thing after another knocking you down, when you feel lost, abandoned, alone, and you stop and think, God, where are you? God, where are you? Because so often when things are going well, we can sense God's presence. We know God is with us. When good things happen, we can attribute them to God and God being close. When we are at peace, we feel that ease, that presence of God being there. But when things go wrong, when we feel discouraged, we can tell that something is lacking. We can tell that something is missing. It feels like God's not there. And I think this is a very reasonable and very human thing for us to often envision God as other. That's how we relate to most things in life, isn't it? I am me, and you are you. And we are two separate beings that no matter how close two people become, they will always remain separate and distinct. So it makes sense that when we imagine God, we often think of God as this being, this thing, this big man in the sky with a beard, this glowing orb of light, or something that is separate from us, that one day, at the end of our days, we will encounter. We will finally be able to see, touch, and hear God like I can see you right now, like you can see me, like I can touch this binder, like I can hear the organ. And I know for me, it can be easy to slip back into this mentality of thinking of God as outside of me and other. But we know this is not the case. God created each and every one of us. God is within each and every one of us, there is no me without God. There is no you without God. There is no separating us from God. For I am convinced neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God is not this other, this thing, this being outside of us. God is here now. God is in you now. God is woven into our entire being from birth to death to beyond. So when we feel that God has left us, when we feel that we are alone, let us look within ourselves. 
There is no need to scream out as if God is so distant, praying that our voices reach God wherever God is. Although sometimes screaming can help. We know that from the Psalms, it can be cathartic. So if screaming helps, scream away. But let us remember that Jesus is always only a whisper away. In fact, Jesus may be the whisper itself. Today, when the Israelites are panicked about the water, we hear them go to Moses and demand a solution. We see them go to Moses twice, in fact. The first time, he asks why they are even asking, why they are testing God. But the people, so thirsty, respond, why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? And this time, Moses brings the issue to God. And I'm left wondering how often we do this. How often are we so deep in a problem? Are we stressed? Are we anxious? Are we spiraling that we reach out to all the wrong places? We try to fix things ourselves or find worldly solutions. But we are called to turn to God. We are called to, together with our community, turn to God. And when we turn to God, I think we might often find that we are called to action. God called Moses to a very concrete action, saying, Go ahead of the people. Take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff which you struck in the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it so that the people may drink. And God calls us to action too. To care for the poor, to love our neighbor, to feed the hungry. Today in the letter to the Philippians we hear, Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. We have seen it throughout Scripture in the Old Testament with the Israelites, in the New Testament with the Philippians. We have seen it in our own lives. There will be times when life is great, when we eat our fill, when we reach the promised land, when we feel so content and feel God's presence so closely. And there will be times when we feel empty and we feel God's, and when we are panicked with thirst, when we feel directionless. And we know that in both of these states, God is with us. God is with you. God is with me. God is here. God is in this place. If it is true that God is in us, and I believe it is true, then God did not only know that the Israelites were thirsty, God was thirsty too. And if it is true that God is in you and God is in me, and I believe it is true, then God just does not know when we are weeping. God does not just witness our sorrows. God is weeping with us. God is grieving with us. Nothing can separate us from God. And if it is true that God is inseparable from us, and I believe it is true, then when we help our neighbor, it is God helping our neighbor. And it is also true that when we help our neighbor, we are helping God in our neighbor. When we feel this separation from God, we are called to quiet ourselves, to focus on this union of God in us, of God in our neighbor, of God working in us and through us, of God working in you and through you. It is in those times when we lose track of God, we are called to go to God, to turn to God, to seek God out, to pray, to love, to act. This past Thursday night, a very wise St. John parishioner said, if God brings you to it, 
God will bring you through it. And I immediately thought of the reading from Exodus today. If God brings us to it, God will bring us through it. But we must remain faithful in prayer, continuous in hope, persevering in love. We must both turn to God with our struggles and be ready to get out there and work here and now. Moses went to God and then got to work. Time and time again, we see God use us, use God's people to change the world. The Israelites had to put their feet to the ground and make the long and arduous journey to the promised land. We are called to put our feet to the ground, to change the world, to follow God's call, today and always. Let the same mind be in us that was in Christ Jesus. Amen.